there was a very, very exciting uh, advance in the field just a few years ago uh, where Dr. Yamanaka, a Japanese scientist, demonstrated that it was possible to take a cell, for example, just a cell from our skin, and convert it into a cell that was very much like a human embryonic stem cell. What that meant is that we can now not only have a source of cells, for example, from the patient, but take a patient with a disease, say uh, Alzheimer's disease or Lou Gehrig's disease or any one of a variety of diseases, and create stem cells that have the DNA of the patient with the disease. Then we can go ahead and create the cells in the organ that are dying and stun it, try to understand why they're dying. So in a very unexpected way, suddenly this technology is going to allow us to study uh, in a whole host of different disorders why cells are not doing well, why they're malfunctioning, uh, why they're dying. Do they have to be human embryonic stem cells or are the cells that we get from our skin as nimble? So I can't answer that yet, and no one can answer that yet. They're, they go by the name of induced pluripotent stem cells, iPS cells. The name doesn't matter. Let's call them iPS cells. An iPS cell is not absolutely identical to a human embryonic stem cell. If you look at the genes uh, that are activated in, in an iPS cell and the genes that are activated in the human embryonic, they are not absolutely identical. Will this make a difference in the long term for human treatments? I can't answer that yet. No one can. The gold standard for all work with iPS cells is the human embryonic stem cell. So you've asked me in a very indirect way, is, gee, do we have to still do human embryonic stem cell research? And the answer is absolutely yes. That is the gold standard. We cannot abandon that because we will not know whether we're going down blind alleys with the iPS cells. The human embryonic stem cell is a cell that's going to keep us honest. It's going to tell us if the iPS cell is doing all the wrong things, the human embryonic stem cell is going to be what tells us, no, you're going the wrong direction, move back. So my laboratory and everybody else's laboratory that works with them works with both kinds of cells. You might even ask the question, does it all have to be human cells? And the answer to that is, well, we can do a lot of work with animal cells, and we do in my laboratory. But ultimately, if we're going to think about developing treatments and cures for human beings, we have to wor work with human cells We have to, because they're not absolutely identical to animal cells. And then hopefully, of course, we reach the point where we're going to transplant cells into human beings. They have to be human cells.